Scott Tales. Oh. Hi everybody, this is Scott Hosteller here with another episode of Scott Tales. Tonight I have something for the romantics. Uh, do you have a special occasion coming up that calls for champagne? Make it special. I mean, anybody can pop the bottle on a champagne, but I've got two champagne cocktails that are easy to make and impressively wonderful to share. First, we're going to open our bottle of champagne. Actually, we don't have champagne, we have cremant which we will discuss the difference uh, later. Ah, there's the pop. <laughs> and uh, this is a Cremant. Champagne has to be from the Champagne region of France, uh, which is about 100 miles east of Paris. Otherwise, it has to be called sparkling wine. Cremant sparkling wine also has to come from certain areas of France, but it is a delicious, affordable alternative to uh, champagne uh, and sparkling wine. Today we are using a 90-point Cremant de Bourgogne, which is from the Maison de Grand Esprit Estate, the, and this is called uh, Lettre Mag Magique. Anyway, what we're going to start with is, to make this extra special, is two parts of gin. Now this gin is the pink gin from Paso Robles, the Crowbar. It is loaded, small batch, it is loaded with botanicals and is very, uh, a wonderful addition to this kind of a, a cocktail. So we're going to go two parts on the French 75, one. Be stingy two and then uh, one part fresh lemon juice then top it with cremon oh I'm going to be uh, butchering uh, French for your edification so um, stay tuned for more uh, French butchery coming up uh, I've been to France several times then just top with a cremon let it bubble up, perhaps a little lemon uh, wedge for garnish, and there you have David Leibowitz's French 75. Delish. I do have an ugly American story from France, and this is true. Um, I was uh, at an outdoor cafe in the country in France, and I was looking over the burgers, and uh, as, a, as, as an American, and I see they have different cheeses and, and condiments and that, and then I see they have a special burger with, uh, has foie gras on the top. I thought, oh man, I'm going to have that. So I, I order it. I say to the waiter, I'll have the foie gras burger. He's oh, very good, monsieur. I said, yes, I guess I'll take cheddar cheese on it. And he goes, uh, uh. And then I said, ah, uh, and, and mayonnaise and mustard. And he, he almost bit his pencil. He says, Monsieur, the chef has prepared it specially. You, you, you don't need to. Oh, okay. Um, evidently, that wasn't an option, and I was being the ugly American that I was being. So, we, and that is the French 75. Now, the elderflower champagne cocktail, if you really want to dress it up, elderflower is a, uh, a fresh floral cocktail aperitif, and this one is Saint-Germain, which is wonderful. Some people would use an elderflower cordial, which is non-alcoholic, and which is fine. I like this because it gives you just so much, so much more depth. So we're going to use half uh, elderflower, Saint-Germain, and then one and a half gin, One. And we're going to use the pink gin again because it is so floral. Oops. Eh, well, I guess we'll go two. That's the good thing about mixing. You can do what you want. And then uh, one half lime juice. We'll only go half with that. Top that with cremel. I watched a Frenchman pour champagne and... He does it so slow as to not make it bubble at all. And that's the proper way to do it. May I it? Then uh, garnish this with lime 
and you have the Elderflower Champagne Cocktail, again, David Leibowitz, let's give it a go. It is terrific. It's got the depth of the Elderflower, a little something special, um, and it, it's just terrific. So anyway, there you have it, the French 75, the Elderflower Champagne uh, cocktail. Um, cheers. And remember, you should drink up, because as Scott Tail says, it's almost closing time somewhere. Ah!